Hey, I'm a guy who doesn't play a whole lot of FPS games. And I started playing some about a year ago for a little while and, and then started again now with Call of Duty. Played some Battlefield for a little bit and a little bit of Apex Legend, but that really wasn't, wasn't something I was interested in. But for people like me who are older, I'm in my 40s and I don't play a whole lot of FPS games, aiming with the mouse and keyboard is a bit difficult when you start. You're, I guess, somewhat terrible. And I have a competitive streak to me, so part of what I wanted to do is be able to aim better. So I started researching how to be able to do that and ran into a couple of things. Uh, the first thing a year ago is I picked up Aim Lab for a little while, played uh, Micro Shot a lot. It was basically training my flicking. I was playing Battlefield, figured if I could uh, click on heads, it would help a lot, and it did. I went from a negative KDA to a positive KDA. Uh, just help just through aim labs. I had games where I was 41 and 10 and 41 and 9 and I stopped playing for Well over a year. No FPS's whatsoever back to RPGs and, and life basically And so I started picking up games again now and just call of duty as the example And my aim just deteriorated significantly and figured okay Well, I, I want to get back to aiming but call of duty takes a while to kill people the TTK is pretty high in war zone, so I need to be able to track people. And that is the weakness of Aim Lab right now, is they don't have a lot of really good tracking scenarios. It's getting better, but the flicking is great, but their, their tracking is not so good. So then I went and got this thing called Kovacs. And with Kovacs, I've greatly improved my aim. I've worked on both flicking and I've worked on tracking. So I'd recommend either one of these programs. They're both going to help you. Aim Lab is free. That's the great thing. The feedback in Aim Lab is way better than the feedback in Kovacs. But the exercise in Kovacs overall are slightly better. And it's just a more mature program. And it also costs you money. So depending on your budget, if you have some money, buy Kovacs and get Aim Lab. Get both of them. Aim Lab's free. If you don't have a lot of money, then just go ahead and grab Aim Lab, that, Aim Lab. That will help a lot. So now I started Call of Duty after a year layoff. My KDA was somewhere around 0 0.5. I was hitting maybe 13% of my shots, 15% of my shots when I started playing again. And obviously that was terrible and I was having a horrible time. Everything I did, I just got owned. I just ran out and got shot. And if it was a gunfight, I lost the gunfight. So I started using Kovacs and Aim Lab every day for about 30, 40 minutes. I would run through a couple of exercises. And fast forward about a month or so later, and my KDA, you know, average is about 1.4, 1.5. There's certain games where I'll just pop off and get 20, 30 kills. And some games where I'm, you know, struggling to, to stay afloat. My percentage of accuracy is now in the mid-20s. Um, there are games where I'll have 40-45% accuracy with a lot of headshots and other games where it's less, but before having 40-45% accuracy was just out of the question. So now it's, it's a lot better uh, being able to aim like that and, and not lose so many gunfights. So, so the first thing that we're going to talk about when you're playing the game is crosshair placement. That is probably the most important part of Fundamentals of Aiming. You'll, you're seeing some images in the background or some video that's going on, and you'll see that normally my crosshair is somewhere around chest or head level. Now I'm training myself at this and I'm not perfect, but I usually try to keep my crosshair somewhere around chest and head level because it just makes it easier to hit them in the chest or head. If I'm walking around looking at the ground, I have to swing up. If I'm looking too high, I have to swing down. But if my crosshair is head or chest, well, when they show up, I'm about ready to shoot them. The second thing about crosshair placement on the screen is look with your crosshair. Sometimes I have the habit of just glancing my eyes around to try to see if people are there. It's good habit to move your crosshair around to look in the directions that you want to look at. What, that is, what that's really going to do for you is it's going to get your crosshair closer to the enemy if the enemy is in the place you're looking. So don't look in places where you don't need to look. And when you do look in the places you need to, make sure that you use your crosshairs to look. The closer your enemy is to your crosshairs, the less you have to aim and the more likely you are to hit them. So those are a couple of really easy tips to start implementing in your gameplay that will help you aim. And we're gonna get to something a little bit more complex as we go along, but those are the fundamentals. Another thing to take into account for aiming is your FPS and the type of monitor that you have. 
If you play on a 60 FPS uh, rig with a 60 Hertz monitor, things will just be difficult for you. The jump between 60 FPS and a 60 Hertz monitor and a 144 Hertz monitor with 140 plus FPS is huge. I personally have a 240 Hertz monitor and I run at 180 to 200 FPS depending on the game and it does make it a, quite a bit easier to see things and it doesn't hurt my eyes so much. When I'm 60 FPS or a 60 Hertz monitor, which I have one as my backup one, it really does hurt my eyes trying to, trying to see everything that's moving when I'm jerking around. So if you have the budget and you don't have a 144 Hertz monitor, now would be a good time to get one. And if you're running at 60 FPS and you could lower settings and crank it up to 144, that would be a good idea. Even on a 60 Hertz monitor, if you can squeak out more FPS, there'll be less lag, it'll be less jaggy, and it will help you aim. Now the next thing I want to talk about is your mouse. If you have a $5 mouse, stop it. Go get a decent mouse. There's a ton of gaming mice out there. I use the G Pro Wireless. I just got that one, but I've used Razer Nagas from my MMO. I've used the Death Adder and, and, any, and many other game mouse, gaming mouses. Just get a gaming mouse that you can adjust things to. You need to be able to adjust the DPI of your mouse. Uh, I run at 400, but you can run at whatever DPI that you want. And that leads us into sensitivity. A lot of people wonder what sensitivity they should play at. And people go, well, find the one that fits you at them. Let me give you a piece of advice. Start low. <laughs> it's easier to aim with your arm than it is with your fingers and your wrist. If you're not used to this kind of stuff, getting your fingers and wrist to move perfectly is complicated. But getting your arm to make movements is a lot easier. When I first started, I started at 400 DPI and a sensitivity in Apex which is something that everybody would understand of 2.4. Very low sensitivity. I've bumped that up a little bit in Call of Duty. I have a 400 DPI and my sensitivity is set to 10. That's the equivalent of three in Apex Legends. So I went from 2.4 to three and that's what I play with. It's slow enough for me to be, to be accurate. Anything higher than that and it's a bit too fidgety and I'm not quite as accurate. And if I need to do a 180, well, I just swing my hand and my mouse moves me around. After the mouse, the next thing you want to look at is your, your gaming uh, setup. Do you have a, a mouse pad that's of sufficient size? I have a full desk mouse pad. You can get an Amazon Essentials mouse pad for like $13, $14, I think it is, maybe $15. And, and that's, that's fine. An Amazon Basics mouse, mouse pad will, will work great. If you have a little bit more money, get a HyperX or a Logitech or whatever. Just get a mouse pad that covers your whole desk so you have enough room to move your hand around. So get a decent mouse, set your sensitivity pretty low, and make sure you have a big ass mouse pad. Now that you got those down, we're ready to start actually going through the aiming exercises. This one is your bread and butter. It is called One Wall, Six Targets, Extra Small. It's a great little exercise. Usually the little dots uh, or spawn far away enough to where you have to move your mouse a decent distance. And it requires a lot of accuracy. So you want to try to be accurate more than you want to be fast. You want to be smooth and accurate. And as you get better at it, you will become faster. This will really help you with your mouse control and your click timing. You notice when I'm playing it, I have to stop a little bit when I get on there and make sure I'm right on. And you see me miss quite a bit also. I get like 95, 96, 98% usually when I'm going through it. But it really helps me move my mouse from point A to point B and be very precise with my movements. It helps basically with mouse control. And I love this exercise. I do this one. It's one of my staples. Uh, I will run this exercise every session. The second exercise that I like a lot is Icy Cat Along Strace. It's a nice little exercise, teaches you how to track. The first time I did this, I was horrible. I was doing scores of 2400, 2500. It was just absolutely terrible. With time, I'm up to my high scores, 6100 now, which is not great. I'm not the best aimer in the world, but considering that I started around 
2400, it's a huge improvement for something that I'm doing, I don't know, maybe I run this 10 times, uh, maybe five times, and play with it a little bit. So this is really gonna help you with your tracking, and it's an easier version of tracking. If you're a more advanced aimer, there's IC Cat of short straights that you can do that wiggle around a little bit more and help you with that kind of movement, but I'm just looking for general mouse control, and this has really helped me track targets when I'm playing in one of the games. So I definitely recommend running this one every day. This is the other exercise that I do, and I try to do that pretty much every day. This exercise makes Jesus, ba baby Jesus cry, makes people angry. It's called One Wall, Five Targets, Pass Who Reloaded. And it's an interesting exercise. You do have to get your tracking down. You have to get your flicking down. You, it's just it's everything your click timing everything put into one as you can see I'm a complete mess on this exercise sometimes I surprise myself at how good I do and sometimes I can't believe I missed one of these balls three times in a row and don't know what's going on but it is a great exercise to be able to establish your precision to be able to track things with your eyes to be able to flick to moving targets and it will definitely increase your ability to aim and shoot things in game now when you play it you might get frustrated the F word comes out quite a bit when I play this exercise not because the exercise is bad but because I'm bad <laughs> and it just makes the exercise that much more painful all right, this video is getting a, probably a little bit too long. Uh, I have another video on the channel already covering a little bit about Aim Lab. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. I have a couple of other exercises that I do. I'll be happy to share those exercises. Subscribe, like if you want me to do something else like this. Have a great day.